Good afternoon. Thank you so much to Ashley and Vanya. It's such an honor to be here um, for a rare day. It's been, it's, I've heard so much about this day. Um, you guys are the talk of the town and it's truly an honor to be here uh, moderating this amazing panel. Um, I'm so excited to get started, but to introduce myself again, my name is Nana Merriweather and yes, is Ashley and Vanya. Uh, alluded to, I have lived many lives um, and I continue to do so. You know, the title of this panel is Working In House or On Your Own, and I currently do both. I work in blockchain, and as Ashley said, I started a low alcoholic wine company. So I'm, I'm pleased to be here to share this space and to hear from uh, both of our panelists, Justine and Alyssa. Thank you both for being here. Um, we can just dive right into the questions here. Um, the first being, can you guys tell us a little bit about your career journeys? Um, what is your day-to-day -day role right now? Um, yeah, like, what do your days look like? We wanna know. Alyssa, do you wanna start? Sure, thanks, Nana. It's so great to meet you. So glad to be here today. Um, the ladies gave an awesome introduction. So as they mentioned, I left college, uh, which was LIM College. It's a fashion business school in New York City and immediately started working at Refinery29. This was back in 20. 15, I believe, if I'm getting those years right. And I started out as an editorial assistant and kind of worked my way up the ranks over about four to five years up to senior fashion market editor. And it was a whirlwind. It was honestly a dream job for me coming out of college, making all those brand connections, traveling to fashion week, the whole nine yards, working on photo shoots, all of that. It was honestly a dream job for me. And that's what made it so hard to leave. Ultimately, in 2018, um, my personal Instagram and personal work was kind of slowly taking off and I came to a crossroads of, okay, what do I do? I can't really keep doing both. It started to feel like I had two full-time jobs, which not, I'm, I'm like all the power to you for working in-house and on your own right now. Cause I know it's not easy. It's so much work around the clock. And eventually I decided to take that leap of faith in 2018 and start working for myself. Um, so now in 2021, I'm wearing a couple different hats. I'm doing my Instagram work as a content creator, obviously influencer stuff, however you want to call it. And then I'm actually consulting on the side for a couple different startups. Um, one of them has to do with home decor. One of them has to do with affiliate partnerships, um, kind of spanning fashion, lifestyle, e-commerce. And speaking of e-commerce, also wearing my entrepreneur hat because I'm building an e-commerce platform right now that's supposed to launch this year. So a little bit of everything, no two days are the same and I'm sure you guys feel me on that. <laughs> Amazing, such a busy day, but busy is good. I like this. Amazing, Alyssa. And you, Justine? Hi guys, how are you? Um, Alyssa, that's awesome. I feel like um, that is like what we all strive to do, right? Like transitioning from a uh, full-time job to being completely freelance. So I, I'm, I'm like very jealous. <laughs> um, but Starting from, you know, when I graduated, um, I interned at several fashion internships. Um, I definitely did not like them. So came home back to Orange County and I had to reassess what I wanted to do and figure out, you know, what my goals and, and what my passions were. And I launched an online clothing um, called gypsumstyle.com. It was about 10 years ago. So again, I wore many hats, you know, owning a business. Um, I did the photography. I'm not a photographer. I did the copywriting the fulfillment. Um, I did the, uh, obviously the social media marketing. And what I really loved about owning that business, what I learned about that is influencers, co content creation, campaign creation. And I took that with me to my next, um, you know, my next opportunity, which is Revolve. So I was at Revolve for four and a half years, craziest, best years of my life. Um, and there I built the influencer department. Um, I helped build the influencer department. And then I also helped to build the social and content team. Um, the last year that I was there, um, I was leading the video content team. So Instagram stories, um, TikTok, and also YouTube. Um, unfortunately, as a lot of people were, I was furloughed in March. Um, but, you know, the silver lining to that was I had the opportunity to kind of pick what I wanted to do next, right? Without having to like feel obligated to do anything. I was put in this position where I can choose a crossroads right now and pick whatever I wanted to do. So I had to really lean into and I wanted to further my skill set and storytelling. I loved content. 
um, and, and, not, and not so much like product pushing, right? Um, and I really wanted to pursue like a growth in my career, like what is next after fashion for me? Um, so I had the amazing opportunity to work with Shay Mitchell full time. Um, so currently right now I manage all of her content production and I advise on um, social across all of her channels. Um, and I work very closely with her uh, businesses base in Onda. Amazing. I love it. And there's so much fashion going on here. I used to yeah. <laughs> bazaar as well. And, you know, unlike our parents who had maybe one career all their lives and did the same thing from college till retirement, I think we have this amazing opportunity to switch through different lives and they all inform each other. Like they seem really random. Like I was an intern in fashion at Harper's Bazaar, but that experience, you know, informs everything else you do for the rest of your life. So you pick up little things and um, yeah, I just love like, all our random, all our random experiences. Um, and on to the next question. Thank God um, for you social media. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, you both worked in-house at major companies and platforms at the forefront of fashion and media. What did those roles teach you that you could take anywhere? So much. Oh my gosh. Um, Refinery29 was an amazing place to work, especially at the time. It was such a period of growth for the company. And I think a couple of main things that keep coming up to this day are the importance of branding. I think Refinery29 from day one was so clearly branded. It's almost like you could see a photo or something from their design that like, and know that it was refinery before you knew that it was refinery. Like the branding was just so strong. And that's something I've really taken into my own personal brand and also to the brands that I consult for. Um, also just the importance of marketing and, and marketing analytics. Refinery really looks at the numbers as far as their content goes and really breaks down what's working, what's not. Okay, let's pivot, that kind of thing. And I think that's why they saw so much success, especially at the time that I was working there. And I didn't realize that behind this kind of guise of fashion and beauty and photo shoots and awesome like sparkly things there's like so much numbers and analyzing that goes on behind the scenes so I kind of also try to carry that into my own work um, across the board yeah me too I mean I feel like there's no such world I think now with social media is just content creation and no data I think like they go very much hand in hand um, but for me it taught me working at a fashion um, company that's, you know, driven strictly by social media, I learned two important sides of the business. And that's the business side of things. And then also the creator side of things. Because um, I work directly with influencers and helping bridge that gap between like, content creators and you know the business and what their needs are. Um, so I would say, from the business side, I knew what they needed. So I really understood um, how to translate that to these influencers. Um, and get the most out of the relationship. And then, um, you know, it really taught me, as everyone knows, Revolve is like a major, like pioneer in content creation or, or like influencer marketing. So I was at the forefront of that. And I would say it was boot camp. <laughs> like if you hire anyone from fired. Revolve, I felt the same. Yeah. If you hire anyone from, from, you know, one of these companies, you know that they're going to have, you know, they work really great under pressure and they, you know, and they have a hard work ethic um, and the sky's the limit because they have, you know, big goals and big dreams. So, you know, these people um, that have, you know, worked on the team can also do so. Uh, but on the personal digital side, you know, for me, I learned how to create marketing through any sort of lens, whether that be like, alcohol or fashion, fitness, beauty, because, you know, we had to do it for, to fulfill all of our partnerships and, and with these different categories of influencers. And so I really believe that prepared me for my job with Shay and it really groomed me as a digital creator. Yeah, Justine, I was going to say that too. The work ethic is just, it doesn't compare like being yeah. in that environment and, and such like an ambitious, huge companies like we both worked for. Like now I even, now that I make my own schedule, I even find myself feeling guilty. Like when I'm not, right. <laughs> you know, because we're so programmed to be like, okay, slack, like, you know, like what's happening. And so I have to like, take a deep breath and be like, no, you're good. You have the day you're off. good. You worked for this. Yeah. <laughs> 
Absolutely. And you you can tell you guys are the best of the best because as you alluded, um, there's the business and the numbers and the analytics and the data, and then there's the creative and the best of the best make it look seamless. You know, there's so much hard work that goes into it, but the beautiful creative that comes out, you guys know what you're doing. That's why you're here today. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see, on to the next question. And we will be taking questions from the audience. So if you have any, put them in the chat. But the next question is, what are the pros and cons of working in-house? What are the pros and cons of working on your own? Just I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to pre preach to the choir because we all know, like, you know, working in-house, you get the benefits, you get uh, security, you get structure, you get, uh, you have a team, you have resources, uh, more opportunities. Um, but of course, you have your limited creative freedom, you know, it's slower to get ahead. It's slower to be seen, or it's harder to be seen. Um, but with freelance, you get full control of your schedule, you get to pick your rate. Um, of course, there's the downside with the lack of security. Uh, there's a lot more overhead, you know, you have to be a business, you have to pay those extra taxes, um, there's liabilities, and you have to pay for your own benefits. Um, but I feel like, because right now I do both. Um, so my biggest takeaway for me that I've found that's worked for me is if you build, if you are capable of building up multiple revenue streams, right? So you have your active revenue stream, and then you have your passive what I like to call my, my passion income. And that I feel, I believe that that will bring you the wealth that you need, that you want to, you know, to get that house or to have that company eventually. Um, so if you have a skill set that you can offer to create another stream of revenue, I think you should absolutely do it. Um, and for me, if I do these things on my own, on my free time anyway, so that means on the weekends after work, I find myself creating, producing, helping friends with their businesses. If you can do that and create a separate stream of revenue, you're going to be good. <laughs> so it's like chill or work. Yeah. I, I choose to work. Yeah, same. I mean, that's a great thing about social media and the internet though. Like, there's so many opportunities for side hustles these days. It's like, it's almost more rare now. I feel like if you don't have a side hustle, at right. this point. <laughs> Um, there's obviously the obvious pros and cons that Justine listed, but also like this was pre COVID, but working in the refinery office every day, those people are my family. Like I saw them more than my own family. Yeah. And I really miss those really like close tight knit connections. Um, because obviously you network and you can co-work with someone and COVID is a whole other story, but I miss that kind of like work family. Cause we really were so close and we had each other's backs and we were in it together. Um, but now I can work from anywhere and maybe a lot of companies are adopting, you know, remote work from now on, which I think is great. Um, cause that's one of the main benefits of being freelance, I think is just the ability to work from anywhere and on your own, uh, schedule. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And amen to side hustles. I mean, I don't think in human history has there ever been a time where media has been so democratized. So it's an amazing opportunity to, I don't know what your motivation is, if you want to make more money or you're just a creative person who wants to express, like take advantage of this time. We are all so lucky to have platforms uh, to speak to and speak on. Um, let's come on to the next question. Uh, how do you collaborate and or work with teams now? Especially Alyssa, you talked about how you miss your, your work family, but how do you work with teams now to both I mean, of you? Both mentioned like now it's like, okay, I'm the photographer, I'm the stylist, I'm the producer, I'm sometimes the agent now thankfully have a manager. It's like you're everything. So I really miss those days of teamwork and I love working with other people. But I think I am really lucky to have sort of a network of photographers that I use on a regular basis and we're all close friends now. And then my roommate, poor thing, has to take my photo half the time. I'm like so thankful for her and just anyone in my corner who's helped out um, here or there or at any point in the process. Um, and obviously now I have a manager dealing like with all of the partnerships and that kind of stuff. So we're on the phone every day. So even though it's, it's, you know, COVID times and we're not seeing as many people not working in teams quite the same way. Um, I still really value the people that are kind of in my circle helping me out. And I look forward to hopefully more set days and shoots and more teamwork in the near future, hopefully. <laughs> Yes, I know. I totally agree. Um, I, I'm, I guess I'm lucky because I get to make my husband take my pictures. Um, he does it for a living. So I feel very grateful. So I, I consider him a partner. But um, I think 
transitioning from a bigger team. I work on a much smaller team now, Mache. Um, I think building communication infrastructure is the, the biggest thing for me. It's the most important, especially you know, uh, transitioning into a team that you've never really like worked with in person uh, with remote working. So the first thing I did was immediately set up Slack <laughs> just to build some boundaries. Um, but I, I, do, I definitely think that communication infrastructure is important. Absolutely. Use all the tools you can for sure. Um, and on to the next question, which I'll preface with, I used to work at Harper's Bazaar, as I said, I was right hand to the editor in chief of uh, the magazine. So my life was a bit like Double Wears Prada, uh, <laughs> a lot of challenging parts, but some of the best things about it was, you know, things ahead of time um, before they were out. Uh, I found that so fun. But how do you guys stay inspired and ahead of trends, especially digital trends? That's a great question. I mean, I think all of us wish we had that crystal ball, but we can just do the best with what we're given. Um, for me, it's a couple different things. Personally, I'm not as concerned with trends. I just want to do what feels authentic to me. Um, but for my clients, for example, one of my clients is a fashion brand based in New York and I do some actual design consulting for them where each season I create sort of a trend deck of what's coming, what I think is cool, what I think is going to be relevant six months from now for the collection that whatever collection they're designing. And that's when I really have to put my like fashion school hat back on and kind of be a trend forecaster. And I think both personally and for my clients, it's about following people on Instagram and on social in the community who I think are really on the cutting edge, whether that's of styling or of discovering new brands, um, wearing cool things, that kind of thing, and just keeping my pulse on uh, the creatives in the community and even younger creatives in the community. Because I think Gen Z, Gen X, I don't know, the younger <laughs> are really like leading the charge right now. I'm like on TikTok trying to figure out what the hell, sorry, my language is going on. Um, so looking to the younger generation, trying to keep up because now all of a sudden I'm the old fart, I guess. <laughs> I feel the same way about these new things that are coming up, this new lingo. I'm like, when did I miss this? Like, what does that mean? Can someone explain this to me? <laughs> Um, so I definitely, I feel you I, and you're very young, Alyssa, so. <laughs> yeah, and somehow, not <laughs> um, but, uh, again, like I, I loved what you said, like, you, you know, it's not really important for you to stay on trends because it's like a, a, about being authentic, but I do understand from a brand perspective, like how do you stay on top of it? Um, for me creating, um, you know, content now that it's more like entertaining or funny that, or that resonates, that's relatable. Uh, with Shay, since that's my main focus now, is um, I'm just so blown away by the creativity of people still. And I'm finding this out on platforms like TikTok. I, I, it's like we never were exposed like that on Instagram. So it's just so refreshing to see that this kind of content is resonating. I mean, like this relatable content is coming out from COVID that it's like, we don't want to see this perfectly polished idea or content we just want to see like all of the flaws in humanity right like you know if your if your boyfriend is a mess like we can we can relate to that and we can make fun of it and like that reaches people um but otherwise it's constant daily digital research for me aside from like the entertainment side of going through tiktok um that i just find myself doing it's just a part of my job you know just making sure I have an eye. I actually have a tip. I'm not sure if you if you guys do this, but I have a, a like a, a creeper account. It's called Coco's Watching You, um, but I only add brands on there so that my entire feed is just full of brands that I want to follow. Um, and then also I just watch their stories. So I just go down a, like a marketing hole to see what everyone's doing. Yes. So that's been really helpful. Oh, that's such an amazing tip. I'm going to do that right after this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and with all of this said, actually, um, we're going now into audience questions. And if you have any more, keep putting them in the chat and hopefully we'll get to them. Um, Joanne asked, how do you not burn out while creating content for your job and personal brand? I remember from my launch day, um, I, I had my day job and my, my side hustle, and it was the biggest day of my side hustle launching my wine company. And there's a picture of me. I had woken up at 4 a.m. and I was still working at 9 p.m. 
And my friend took a picture of me just laying on the floor by the time I was done. So how do you guys deal with burnout? <laughs> I experienced major burnout um, at my last job and it's hard, you know, like you really have to lean into your, your resources. And, and like that, for me, that's my, my friends and my close friends and, and my husband. And I'm like, I feel a little brain dead right now. Can you just take a second look at this and tell me what, what, like, what do you think about it? So I think um, having the help um, and it's not, you know, you shouldn't feel bad about asking for help. Like sometimes you, you know, you can't be 100 all the time. So that's how I would deal with it. So true. Yeah. I'm not the person to ask about this because my lines between work and play and relaxation get so blurred. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. And it's hard because, you know, when I'm on vacation, I'm like, oh, this is an amazing content opportunity. I need <laughs> Like I need to create content. And so I have to deliberately decide, you know, if I'm going on a trip ahead of time, I have to plan ahead, plan content or tell the brands that I'm working with that I'm taking some time off, like really plan ahead and commit not to working while playing. Um, and it's hard to draw that line sometimes, but I think also finding your outlet, whatever that is for me, it's surfing. I took up surfing during the quarantine and I just go out to the ocean. I have no technology, no phone, no laptop. It's just me and the water and often my partner or a friend of mine. And it's just to be in nature away from everything has been so therapeutic. So whatever that is for you, whether it's a hike or a walk or yoga, whatever it is, hang on to that because it's vital. I love that. Yeah. Brilliant. So Yeah, that's so good. Uh, seek nature. Yes. <laughs> all your stress. <laughs> um, yeah, back to audience questions. These are all so amazing, by the way. So keep the questions coming. Hi, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but this question is for Justine from Nahai. Uh, Shay is so present on all channels from Instagram to TikTok to YouTube as her lead digital strategist. How do you prioritize when and how often you share on each channel, especially since the viewers' behaviors vary between each platform? It's a lot of work. <laughs> we have a very small team. Um, the thing that I really learned and love about Shay is that she is one of the hardest working people that I've ever met. And when I first started with her, she really taught me how to, um, you know, pick a designate content days and just stack content, like to really like, okay, how many TikToks can we get while we are shooting this IGTV. So it, it's like we capture as much content as possible. We maximize a day because we don't want to work all day, every day. Um, so that's what she's really taught me as far as being e effective and efficient um, during content days. Um, now, how often we should be uh, activating on each account. And yes, it's important for us to be active on every account because, you know, she's very heavy in social. Um, she I personally, if, you know, if I were to consult, it would be asking my client, like, what, what uh, social channels do you love? You know, like, where do you want to spend most of your time? Um, and so we kind of start with that. She really loves TikTok. Um, and she genuinely loves the platform. She doesn't just want to grow. Um, so we really put a lot of, you know, time into her TikTok. I, I do have um, growth strategists uh, that I talk to at every single platform. Um, that we that we work with. So Instagram, TikTok, if you guys, you know, work with a, a brand, you should definitely uh, reach out to the, you know, to YouTube or Google and ask them if you can have a point of contact, because they can give you these, these really important insights that we don't have access to. Um, like I know TikTok is extremely limited with their data, but um, every month I, I request um, a recap with all analytics and all data that I, I don't have access to. Um, so with that said, we also think about like, how much, how hard do we want to go? Right. So YouTube, we found a really nice cadence. Um, I think of course, all of them, the strategy is to go as hard as possible, but I think it's just, it's not realistic. Um, so we do what's fun and we focus on those areas and that's how we figure that out is data. Amazing. Thanks for giving us the insight, the BTS. She's an amazing presence online. Really well done. Thank you. She's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, and on to our next audience question from Carlita. 
what's the best content creation app you've tried so far? And what's your favorite content? Oh, yeah, that's the question. Sorry, it was written wrong. <laughs> what is your favorite content creation app? <laughs> that is such a good question. I have to say, I really like my video editing app. I actually prefer to edit video like on my phone rather than on the computer. It's called Video Shop. Um, and once you get the hang of it, you can clip everything together the way you want. You can add music, you can add text. They have really cute text options, speed, audio, voiceover, like you name it. You can do everything in this one app, Video Shop. I can't live without it for video stuff. I love it. Oh man, I have, I have so many and I pay for all of them. My gosh. Um, Tezza, 100%. I love Tezza's app and I love the new features when it comes out. Um, I, me too. I really love editing video on my phone. So I use video leap. I know that there's tons that are great. Like, um, uh, there's splice there's, but I prefer video leap. And then there's also prequel. So that has really great like motion, um, animations that I don't know how to do on the computer. And this is a great way to fake it if you don't have a graphic designer. Um, and of course, Canva, like hands down Canva, we don't have a graphic designer on Shay's team. Um, so I really had to like figure out how to deliver these like beautiful polished assets um, very quickly uh, without having to go back to like graphic school. So I would say those are my favorite. I'm like writing these down. I've been thinking about oh. getting people actually. So it's good to hear People's that. People's dope. It's so cool. Amazing. Such great tips. Thank you both so much. Um, and we're going to move on to our last questions and then we'll wrap up our panel. But from Jessica in the audience, what tools do you guys use to analyze marketing performance on Instagram? Any other favorite sites or tools you want to let us know about when it comes to performance? So if you're working with a bigger brand, the first uh, you know company that I would suggest working with, um, and I absolutely love, is Dash Hudson. Um, they have so much information through the APIs with Instagram. Um, so it tracks uh, it tracks stories, it tracks um, ca influencer campaigns, hashtags, and the performance in all content. Um, you could have multiple channels too. Like if you have you know if the brand has five different accounts, you can you know link that and plug that in there. Um, but if you don't have that budget because it is kind of pricey, um, I would definitely try to reach out and get some sort of like a strategist or a growth strategist um, at these companies, because if you're eligible to get one, I would definitely try and take advantage of that um, because they can give you, you know, monthly inf information, some back end stuff, or maybe some new product fe features that you can get your hands on that first, um, you know. Like if you're the first person to figure out what Reels is and they kind of test you on that, then I think you're already ahead of the curve. So if you have those resources, I would say we try to try to get them. That's a great point. Yeah. And I think I would add another one is four card. It's F O H R. Um, I remember that really came in handy when I didn't yet have um, management. So if you're like a micro influ influencer or mid-range influencer who doesn't have a team yet working on all this stuff, you can actually download a one, a one sheet PDF from your dash or from your, sorry, four card profile. And it's really great because it makes it all polished for you with like your top posts and your top analytics and your kind of bio. And you can just have that document to send to brands when they reach out. And I remember how helpful that was when I didn't have someone doing that for me. So it's a really great platform as well for card. Totally. Is that affordable um, for a card? They have been making some changes and I haven't used it in a while. So it was at the time. I think it still is. You may just have to apply to get accepted. Okay. Yeah. I always love learning about the, the like other ones too. So that's helpful. Thank you. Sure. Definitely. We actually have one more bonus question from the audience. And this one is for you, Justine from <laughs> Lori. <laughs> Do I feel like real friends with Shay or is it super strictly business? Maybe too nosy to ask, uh, <laughs> but I'm always curious about this job where you have to work together a whole lot of like, uh, yes, a long um, so I met Shay at Revolve and, you know, we've had like, we're all very close, like all of the influencers and the, the people that I worked with because we travel. 
And we've literally had to like go through, you know, a sketchy mountain on a big bus together and we all thought we were going to die. So yes. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're, we're definitely friends. Um, she is like a very professional person and I work out of her house because that is her office for the meantime. Um, she is, yeah, I mean, yes. I mean, yes, we drink together and stuff sometimes like when there's alcohol around because, you know, she, she owns uh, Onda, which is a sparkling tequila brand that she just launched. So I would definitely say she's not like your typical, um, like uptight boss that you can't connect with. She's very fun. She's very, she's very sweet and she's very giving. So yeah, again, like our, unlike our parents, work and play are so melded right. together in our jobs these days. Um, but thanks for the juice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm over to have some onda. <laughs> yes. But that is it for this panel. Thank you, Justine and Alyssa, so much for your insight. I know I learned a lot um, that I'm going to take with me, especially those tools you guys mentioned. Um, thank you both so much for being here. And thank you, thank you. Thank you Ashley. Vanya for having us. This is such an amazing, inspiring day. But thank you, guys. Thank you, audience. Well, <laughs> love you.